Hi, so uh, it's welcome again to Saga from S Commerce Match. Uh, going to have uh, in the video today, we're just going to do a very quick fire um, conversation about the difference between Magento 1 and Magento 2 with somebody that's been using Magento since, since the very beginning. So uh, I'm expecting you to uh, answer all my questions with no passes or hesitation, Saga, so I hope that's good. Sure. Um, so what I wanted to do today was just um, have it really useful for the people that watch it just to understand um, the, f the differences in the, each of the different sections between one and two just so they can think okay yeah that's for me that's useful that's yep. not so um, if we can kick off um, it's in kind of a particular order um, front end What's the uh, differences on the front end? I think the front end, uh, they have uh, very crispy UX and UI designs, you know, on there. It's responsive, out of the box, and uh, the technologies they have used is, is a bit different from Magento 1. Uh, they are using more HTML5, uh, less, you know, very modern technologies like uh, Knockout JS. You can also use React if you want, if, because uh, out of the box, they give you APIs available, which okay. is headless. So you can okay. have your own uh, front end if you like. So it's it's completely different from Magento One. Okay. From a front end point of view. Extending that then from front end mobile experience. Then you mentioned responsive. What's the difference between mobile experience, Magento One, Magento Two? Uh, Magento One it does not come with responsive at all. So right. you know that was a downside. But yeah. like you can obviously buy themes and stuff which can be responsive. But uh, what Magento Two has done, they have not only the front end. The admin portal as well. It's it's more of a more responsive uh, design. So you could. So you can actually do the admin portal. Admin on the portal. Like I'm not saying that it's hundred percent there, but it's much much you know better than what we had in Magento One. Okay, that's good. Um, also on the front video, what any. The I think they you? have introduced now. Uh, you can have YouTube videos, you know, integrated with it, so you can use your YouTube APIs yep. to show videos on the on Magento Two, whereas Magento Two, Magento One did not Didn't have, have that. that. Okay. The reporting then. So how would reporting be different uh, between it, Magento? It's completely different. Like you know, they have you will if you have used Magento One, you will see all sort of report which were there in Magento One, in Magento Two, and also they have now. BI reporting, which is a separate, uh, you know, entity altogether. Right. And you can offload all your data, which you want to analyze separately. And there are, you know, they use Tableau and all sorts of uh, reports where you can see, uh, you know, much granular reports, right. which you couldn't do it in Magento One. So it's it's out of the box from from day one. Wow. You can just integrate. Uh, just I think it's a it's a paid service, but yeah. it's worth having that sort of reports if you are actually. Uh, really into you know looking at your data, looking at yeah. the segments, uh, just getting the, getting the insight the... of the information what you need. Okay. It's, yeah. So much more powerful than much more powerful than Magento One. Yes. Excellent. For sure. Are there any differences in order processing? Actually, I think the admin in side? terms of the order processing, I don't think so. Like you will find a huge difference uh, how you were managing the orders. So you just basically have order management, invoicing, dispatching, partial shipments. You know, all that sort of stuff are very similar. I would not think uh, there is anything which they have changed. The one thing which I mentioned before as well, the introduction of APIs for everything. Yeah. So if you have an ERP system, out of the box, you will be able to uh, uh, get your orders, invoices, shipment data, and you can sync order statuses between two systems as well. So that's, uh, that's, that's the addition which is in Magento 2, which was not there in Magento 1. Right, that's pretty powerful, isn't it, yeah, then, yeah. if you're using other systems. What about user management? Any differences there? Uh, I think user management, uh, there are a couple of things they have introduced, very similar to, to Magento 1, but you, know, you, you will be able to uh, force uh, sign-in using the customers. You can place order on behalf of them uh, by obviously the authorization from them. Yeah. And uh, then you uh, should be able to see more uh, granular report about the customer orders and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I think, as as I said, like you know, it's it's not hugely different. But but that um, being able to place orders on behalf of other people, that actually is a very powerful tool for customer service teams, isn't yes. it? Um, so they're actually able to go in and and do that. Yeah. 
Um, so actually, for particularly for complex purchases where gotcha. maybe somebody's talked to somebody over chat, live chat, or audio or something like that, they can place orders. That's yeah. that's quite a powerful thing, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the checkout experience, what would you say? Um, has changed about that? I think uh, if you compare Magento 1 and Magento 2, I think uh, there is a increase of, you know, in terms of speed is 35% faster, uh, especially because Magento 1 had like five or six steps. Right. Uh, so, so you need to click like five, six buttons right. to reach to the order confirmation page. Yeah. Whereas Magento 2, you have only two steps. Okay. Uh, so. Wow, so they've, cut, the, they've the really cut compressed the, that checkout process, which is something that we know from performance marketing makes a massive difference to sales. Definitely, yeah. Wow, so okay. You want quickly, like, you know, people to just buy uh, instead of going through multiple yeah. steps to choose stuff. Okay. Um, what about on the getting people to buy more? What about customization? Uh, I think you can do a lot like Magento 2 and Magento 1. You can do uh, customizations uh, in both platforms. But uh, what Magento 1, 2 has introduced is like, you know, you can just uh, do it more easily. You know, there right. are a lot of technology changes they have adapted, lesson learned from Magento 1. Uh, I can go into detail about them, but I think that will be like, you know, too okay. much granular information. But, it, but the bit, so the big difference for people listening to this would be saying, okay, customization is easier. Yes, it is. Which it, means it will be less costly because the development company yes. will spend less time doing those so customizations. So Magento 1 had a challenge of like, you know, conflicts with a lot of extensions. Right. Uh, whereas Magento 2 has narrowed it down. So I'm not saying there will be no conflicts, yep. but it will be a less conflicts the way they have architecture it. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Um, so, interesting one. Are the changes around offline functionality. Uh, I think uh, in terms of offline, like you, you can take orders offline. Yeah. So you can do, but I think it's very similar to what we had in Magento One as well. So okay. I don't think so. There is a huge difference from there. Whereas, like you know, if you see uh, a lot of new payment providers are coming. Like yeah. Klarna is very popular nowadays. Right. So you get those sort of payment providers uh, doing offline payments and stuff like that yeah. out of the box, which wasn't there before in Magento 1. Right. So you can do those offline payments and uh, integrate things like Klarna. Yeah, Klarna is really, uh, really uh, being embraced by a lot of people now, which is great. Yeah. Um, is there anything else in terms of the streamlining of the UX that you would call out as a big difference between... Um, one and two. Yeah, I think uh, the accessibility and the uh, UI UX experience is, has changed completely. Yeah. You know, they, earlier they were like, you know, just uh, they build an e-commerce platform in Magento 1 and whatever the out-of-the-box theme uh, they provided wasn't, uh, you know, good enough yeah. for, you know, addressing these issues. But whereas what they have provided now, it's it's much better than, than Magento 1. Okay. That's good. Uh, I'm now thinking big. I'm thinking about my e-commerce store. It's been going great. So uh, multi-currency support and multi-store support. So yep. for those people that are going, right, we need to expand, you know, why why go Magento 2 from Magento 1? What's the differences in the... I think uh, I would say that Magento 1 did support multilingual and multi-website. Multi so as, as such, there is no difference on that front. But because uh, Magento 2 has introduced, you know, cat the, the database scaling, yeah. uh, so you can do cl more clustering on it. Right. So out of the box, if you want to have your catalog database yeah. completely separate, then your order management database, you could do that. Right. And including your checkout database. So you can get like three databases yeah. separated from each other. And you can uh, even, uh, if you have a catalog management team sitting in UK yeah. and somebody is sitting in, in US, you know, they just want to do more orders there. Yeah. So you can actually offload those databases as well if you want. Right. So that means all the catalog management, which is just for customers yeah. and plus for admin users, they can yeah. do it in that database. Yeah. And uh, the order management is completely like, you know, can be done in a separate. And uh, I'm just going more technical here. Yeah. But then, you know, the data database concept is like having uh, master and slave databases. Yeah. So I'm, I'm talk I talked about these three databases. You yeah. can have them three master, yeah. and then you can have slaves under them, underneath right. them, which means you could have 
ended up having as many as databases as you want. So this is where the power of this clustering really comes in now so that um, you're not going to get throttled when it comes to database speed because you've got this power to scale these databases. Exactly. Because if you think about like, you know, you have 10, 12 multi website and then you have loads of customers, loads of orders coming in yeah. and it's sitting in one database, it's going to explode, right? So yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you don't need a rocket scientist to understand that part. So, so do, you, do you have to segment databases by store if you want to or can you leave them together or what's I think the, they, they will be all it, together. Uh, I, but, but do catalog management, separate catalog from orders, yes. order process? Because if you think about it, right, admin person sitting in there, updating catalog, clearing the caches and stuff like that, and that will affect, you know, all of your checkout, all of your order management, all that yeah. sort of stuff is going to get affected. Yeah. And that was a challenge in Magento 1, yeah. because most of the people were really scared to change anything in the catalog during the day, because it's going to clear caches, yeah. it's going to affect the performance, you know, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So Magento 2 has more flexibility around that, yeah. where you have less impact on your front end. Right, okay. That's good. Um, have you seen any difference in the support for Magento? Uh, well, in fact, I, I almost know the answer to this question. The, the question of support for Magento 1 versus Magento 2. Uh, <laughs> it's quite an easy one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. so I think uh, if you think about it, right, so they are, they sell, uh, at the moment they have commerce platform, which is like on, the, on their com commerce cloud. Yeah. And then they have enterprise, which you can go enterprise, but you can self-host it. Yeah. And then obviously like you can have, your, you know, open source. So right. if you go all commerce cloud, yeah. it's fully supported right. by Magento. You don't need to worry about infrastructure. You don't need to worry about issues. They will do everything for you. Right. And it's uh, it's a very quick response. You, you create a ticket with them and they will do that. And then what they have done with the commerce cloud is like the whole pipeline from your uh, development server to the staging server to the production server it's all automated right so you just have a click of a button it just deploys everywhere right okay so that is actually that's going to almost like a SaaS version but of a fully customized product which is yes. super super cool really isn't it yeah super cool okay that's great um we're getting there now so search user search yeah it's really important difference between one and two so user search, you know, they have introduced Elasticsearch, uh, which is, you know, very niche technology nowadays, like everybody's just, you know, talking about it. Uh, it that's the powerful uh, search you can ever get. Yeah. So that's what's been introduced in Magento 2 out of the box. Yeah. So you can just change the configuration and get it all set up, you know. Okay. It can't be as easy as that. So but it's, it's more powerful. It's much, it's much powerful than normal you know, MySQL database search. Yeah, okay. Um, one of your favorite subjects, speed. Right. <laughs> Difference between speed on one and two. Yeah, I think, uh, as I mentioned before as well, the, the technical uh, side of things, the tech stack has completely changed uh, yeah. in Magento 2. Uh, they, they understand that the speed is really important. So they have introduced like merging of CSS, merging of Java, JavaScript, Minify, CSS is minify JavaScripts. Uh, you can uh, out of the box have Varnish as well, which is a front front end cache mechanism. Yeah. You can have Redis out of the box. Uh, you can configure for back end caching. Uh, then you have RabbitMQ for the queuing management system. So you know, for, just for an example, yeah. if you're placing an order, there's a lot of thing happens, right? So you you just add some stuff to the basket. You check out. You put your information in there you uh, do a transaction with the payment pr provider and then you send an email. Yeah. So a lot of things you can offload and put it in the queue right. like Amazon does. Yeah, you know? yeah. If you go to Amazon and you click uh, uh, buy now, yeah. it will just immediately re respond back your order has been placed. Yeah. But they actually... don't they don't take order, uh, you know, they don't take payment at that time. Yeah. They just put it in the queue. Yeah. Your order processing happens later. Yeah. They process the payment in case if your card card has problems. Yeah. It, you will get an email back saying that sorry your card has a problem. Card, card has a problem. Use so, the alternative methods and so stuff like better, that. So better better user experience, better use of the um, the resources at the server side in terms of you don't have to be 
dealing with massive peaks and troughs kind of yeah. thing so mm -hmm. you can have, level that out mm -hmm. um, and good you know good user experience in that then it doesn't have to be caught by somebody manually in terms yeah. of if something fails so yeah. okay so there is a lot of things you could do with magento 2 platform which uh, wasn't there in magento 1 okay okay so here's a here's a big question mm -hmm. uh, i'm not going to ask you how much an upgrade would typically cost because i know that that is like how long is the piece of string yeah but people would be interested in understanding typically what a timeline is and if we if we contextualize this by saying single site no multi-language none of that complexity probably running a single currency yep. typical you know few hundred SKUs or whatever what's the kind of timeline that people should be thinking about for doing a migration to one from one to two I think if you are talking about one to two and you know it depends on a lot of other factors as well how many extensions you have in Magento 1 yeah whether those extensions are available in Magento 2 or not yeah uh, you know anything you have done bespoke in Magento 1 yeah. which wasn't been done by third parties you just do it did it in in-house right okay. uh, so we need to rewrite all of that stuff into Magento 2 yeah but if it's a simple site where very few plugins are out there I would think that probably around three months okay that's still months. quite a long timeline given that there is no longer support for magento one yeah People i think really need to be thinking about yeah i think because if you think about it right as i mentioned that magento 2 is a re-platform you know it's people just think when it comes to upgrade people just think okay i'm going to the next version yeah, yeah. it's like going from you know one version of word or your os when you when your phone says we're going to upgrade you overnight yeah it's not that easy. It's not, is it? that, it's not that easy. It's completely replatformed. So that means uh, I would say that you know you are rebuilding the site. Yeah. And the three months, you know, rebuilding, a, you know, on a new platform. Yeah. Is it's going to take like you know a bit of time, depending on. As I said, it all depends on what you have. If you have out of the box Magento and you just want to do it Magento two, that is much much quicker. Yeah. But I I would doubt it. Any any client out there who will having just Magento one. And yeah. no plugins, no bespoke elements. Yeah, because no they wouldn't have because they wouldn't have bought Magento if they exactly. didn't need anything yeah. special. Exactly. So um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, before we finish, is there anything that uh, people need to be aware of when looking at the migration? Um, you know, what should what should be front of mind for them? I think uh, most important thing, which I say to all our clients as well, is check the data when you are migrating from one platform to another make sure your all data has been transferred. Right. Uh, even though like, you know, my, uh, Magento has done a really good job of giving a migration tool yeah. uh, out of the box, which does wonderful job. Yeah. But then still like, you know, like companies like us, we, when we migrate, we just migrate the data, right? We don't understand, you know, the data itself. Yeah. Whether, you know, how many categories they were having, have, have how many they products they were having, what sort of color options they were having. Yeah. So I would say that when, uh, you done with the data migration just make sure that you check the data thoroughly so probably plan that data migration thoroughly as yes, well yeah. and then check it at the other end yeah. not just assume that it's yeah, yeah because okay. we had uh, instances where people just like suddenly came back or uh, have few few hundred products missing uh, <laughs> and uh, then we look back and then we managed to get it get it in there but again like you know if you yeah. do it uh, up front then you don't have that sort of hassle after yeah, yeah. going live and you're finding you know, things are missing yeah yeah factor of uh, them not planning properly okay no that's great um really good so that's our quick fire differences between magento one and magento two uh i'm sure there's even more detail we can drill into um people will be looking at this on the innovation visual um knowledge hub but if they want to get hold of you how could they get hold of you uh, they can email us at core at scommerce-mage.com yeah. or they can also go on our website uh, www.scommerce-mage.com.